I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here at Synopsys with Neil Sanquan. One of the new wrinkles in system design is all the IP that's coming into a design in order to get complex SOCs to market more quickly. So what do you do? How do you deal with that? When you look at a typical project development cycle where a uh, customer or a designer would uh, initially uh, do a lot of our IP validation. For example, they'll validate a specific uh, IP. It could be a video IP. Uh, it could be some type of modem IP, but they need to do some initial validation before they port it over to, let's say, a complete SOC to do system validation. So they'll first initially go to some IP validation and then eventually get into a, a system validation type of uh, development. And then, at, and then at that point, be able to then go ahead and tape out this SOC, okay? So the challenge that we saw with this particular project development cycle is the actual validation of that IP. Uh, we see customers struggling to bring up their um, IP on a, uh, a specific uh, platform, um, and then taking that IP that they just validated for either for performance, um, interoperability, or some compliance, how to port that over to a system validation, okay? So um, in terms of the bring up process, um, the, the, the first challenge we saw was, well, how quickly or how uh, effectively we can uh, help our customers uh, validate uh, IP, and then once they validate their IP, be able to go to, to do some system validation. Now, given that, let's say they can continue to um, have the same amount of time for their project, what this allows then is a much more, let's say, uh, time to do validation. Okay. So they would then have all these additional time to validate the entire SOC and, and it does at the end have a much uh, better quality product for their customers. Is this happening at every process node? Is it just at 16, uh, 14? Where are you seeing it? I, we, we, see the, we see this at any, any nodes. Um, it's, it's, it's not uh, specific, to, specific to a specific node. We see this more on the, uh, the trend of these uh, complex SOCs or the demand that our end customers would want, especially they want like a single device that does you know, uh, this and that, uh, want to do, they want to add all these additional interfaces, they want the performance, and it's really a, a, a trend what, are, what the end customers really want for a specific uh, SOC. So the second benefit, or um, the second benefit of, let's say, bring up an IP in a project development cycle is that, well, you know, let's say that you're given, you're able to validate the uh, the IP much much faster in, in previous uh, projects uh, and you say you've allocated the same amount of time to do system validation the gain then that these customers would then able to achieve is what we call this like an additional time to market okay which then allows them to really tape out their SOC in a much faster process in than previous uh, project cycles. So this is a big advantage in terms of quickly identify what the challenges are, address those challenges, and be able to tape out their, their chip in a much faster um, way than, than previous, um, previous uh, projects. So IP is, is a little bit different than software, particularly the IP that is being developed for an SOC. But you're starting to get some of the same advantages as what you're talking about here of early bring up, early uh, design with some of that software in the SOC, right? Right. right because you right. have you, right now you have a lot more interaction between the uh, various pieces than you did in the past. Right. right. So, so what what happens is with with IP um, and IP is not just you know in the past with the previous designs there was a single maybe a single IP or two IPs. But we see now in these complex SOCs, we see multiple IPs either internally developed or um, 
third-party IPs. And what a, a, a designer could do or a developer could do is individually validate these IP and have a platform and distribute these out to the multiple software developers that are really um, ready to start software development as early as possible. Because what other gain that I didn't mention in this particular product development cycle is if a lot of the software development can be done at the very early stages of a product development cycle, what this does then is that once the, let's say the, the chip get uh, returns at this point, there's really no additional software development that's needed. And at this point, a, a developer or, or uh, a, a company could release that chip to its end user. How much of this um, takes into account the interaction of the IP to other IP and what's around it that you didn't have in the past? So what happens is um, once you are developing uh, IP uh, or on an IP level as opposed to a complete SOC is that you can uh, validate multiple IPs um, let's you know uh, multiple IPs individually let's say these are your individual IPs that you are validating okay each IP can be placed onto a uh, an FPJ based platform okay uh, validated with performance uh, interact with real world IOs let's say streaming IOs here streaming IOs here okay now once this is ready to go into let's say a larger SOC or interact with a processor based design or interact with other IPs they could be placed into a larger FPJ based platform okay and the advantage of this is that you can continue to use the scripts, the, um, the, the implementations that you implemented on an individual IP level uh, and either take those and reuse them in a larger scale or connect them directly onto a larger system. Like, for example, let's say this is your processor-based applications. Now you have these individual IPs that have been already validated and start interacting with a larger system here. And what this also does, this type of uh, methodology is the bring up time of the SOC reduces. And the bring up time of the SOC reduces, thus again, allowing you to do what we call this then release that chip much earlier in, the, in your product development cycle. So by doing it this way and putting all your IP and software into an FPGA, pro, FPGA prototype, what do you actually cut out of the process in terms of to gain uh, time savings? Okay. So with this particular process or the methodology that I described here, what really is eliminated with this is the time once the, uh, let's say the chip comes back at, at, at this point of stage is, what you're eliminating is the additional software development that you would have uh, needed to do if you didn't introduce software development much earlier in the product development cycle. So in essence, what happens is that all of your software developers would then get on to, uh, or get to start doing software development post-silicon post and thus release of a project much later uh, than anticipated. Is the quality better as well? Is that something that you you see a big difference in terms of when people are, are using this approach, they actually get to market faster, but the, is it a better quality because they're working, working it through up front? Oh, we have, absolutely, because now you're doing a lot of the software and uh, hardware integration 
uh, you're getting the um, software developers to write code much earlier in the process. So if a potential issue is discovered because you got your software developers um, getting access to a design pre-silicon, they can immediately uh, uh, communicate this with the RTL developers or the hardware engineers and really iron out, let's say, the potential problems early in the process as opposed to later where perhaps there might be some schedule crunches that, that needs to uh, quickly happen. So it's really getting both teams, the hardware and the software team, uh, working together early in the process to discover potential issues much earlier in the, in the project development cycle. And those issues also are not just the standard hardware, they're the, uh, the hardware plus the third party IP plus all the interactions that go on within the SOC, right? Exactly. It, so everything starts to come together now. All the IP that uh, was was developed uh, or or purchased externally, uh, and then all the software components that need to interact with all the individual uh, IPs. Because really, what a, um, a designer does at the end is uh, does it meet a user specification? So when all of these IPs and all the processor-based designs uh, come together, is from a user's perspective, does, does, does it meet those requirements? Neil Sonkon, thank you very much for a great explanation. My pleasure.